Good morning, fellow DIYers. I just got all the kids safely off to school, and I don't know about you, but before I start any project in the workshop in the morning, I need my cup of coffee, and here's my first cup, thank goodness. Mm. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a very basic refinish on a set of mid-century modern uh, end tables that anybody can do at home with just a very few basic supplies. Most of these supplies can be purchased from your grocery store, from your local big box hardware store, or even things you find around home. I've been looking for a fairly well-maintained set of end tables in this exact style for quite a while now. Um, Mid-century modern is very much a buzzword in today's refinishing market. Consumers love them for their clean lines, sleek curves, and quality woods. So the very first step to refinishing any piece of furniture is the assessment of your piece. This is absolutely essential because you need to know what you're dealing with in order to know what you need to do and what you need as far as supplies to execute the project. So let's go take a look and get started. Okay, let's start on the top over here. You can see a circular watermark, which I'm guessing was from a house plant um, based upon the circular nature of the stain. You can also see some sort of um, un unknown substance that is crusted on the top here, um, which will have to be removed. That same substance is on the other piece. You can see it here as well that will need to be smoothed out to give a nice clean surface for the paint to adhere. Also, you can see on this one, there's some pretty significant dings on the, the finish itself. And they're, they're, pre they're, pretty, they're pretty rough, I can feel them. They gouge in pretty far. They will definitely need to be filled or you will most certainly see that on your paint job. Also, while I was setting these pieces up, I unfortunately knocked this one to the ground and happened to, uh, yeah, I did that. So yeah, we're gonna need to fix that. That's gonna be a whole issue, but don't worry, we can do it. Here, you can see my go-to supply setup for cleaning. A complete list can be found in this video's description. I like to use eco-friendly, safe products because I always worry my kids might get into my supply stash and of course, it's better for the environment. All of these items are readily available in hardware stores, grocery stores, and some items can be, re be repurposed from your trash, such as these rags you see here. They are actually cut up cotton t-shirts that my middle son destroyed. They were not salvageable and I was going to toss them out. So instead, a great way to save money is cut them up and recycle them. Having young children, I always have plenty of baby wipes lying around the house, and I like to use these for spot cleanup as well. All right, now that we've gone ahead and done a nice thorough assessment of our piece, we have a good idea of what we need to clean specifically for this piece. So I went ahead and got all of my supplies um, lined up here for easy access. So why don't we go ahead and get started with the first part.
now we're gonna go ahead and find some dings on this piece and get them filled. Um, sometimes it can be hard to see the dings, so it's a good idea to get up really close and actually kind of use the light, um, look against the light and you can see the surface more clearly. So here you can see we got some pretty big ones. Um, they're pretty deep. If we don't fill this, you will absolutely see it on the paint job. So let's go ahead and just fill these babies up. I like to just squeeze it directly on. Don't worry if you put too much on because you're gonna go ahead and scrape it off anyway. So we go ahead and we start filling and wipe off the excess. And it's important to get it from different angles so that you're moving the wood filler into the holes as tightly compacted as possible. You want to remove as much excess as you can to save yourself extra sanding and work in the future. So this looks pretty good. One more little swipe to get the excess, and I think that'll do it. So it's very important for you to understand the basics of sandpaper for scuff sanding and for removing the extra fill in the dings. Um, I'm going to be using a 220, which is a finer sandpaper. Um, and the reason for that is this is an older finish and I don't want to damage it. Um, you might want to use something a little bit tougher, like a 100, if you overfilled and didn't scrape enough off. So, for example, if you put way too much filler on, you didn't scrape it off and you need to take it off more quickly, this might be a better option. Now here's an 80. This is a very rough grit and I would never use something like this on this type of finish because it will absolutely scratch it and you will end up doing more filling. Here, you can see I'm tearing a full sheet of sandpaper up. I usually cut the pieces into six smaller pieces. So go check out our cost saving tips for the details on how this simple action can help you save some cash. So we're just gonna wiggle it out, not too far, just far enough that I can use my little glue injector here. Um, these are readily available anywhere. You can order them online. Um, they're single use. Once you use it, you gotta toss it. So again, I'm going to just inject the glue into this space. You wanna use enough to cover as much of the surface as you can for what you can see, but you don't wanna use so much that it's dripping because um, it will be difficult to prime. You must wipe any excess glue off. All right, so now that I have some in there, I'm just gonna push it back down and I'm gonna use something heavy to hold it. Normally, I would probably use a clamp, but because of where this is on this piece, a clamp is not a viable alternative. Um, a clamp really wouldn't do anything. It's better for us to just use the weight to push it nice and far down and hard, and we're gonna leave this for at least a good hour. But before we leave it, we're gonna wipe it off. We're gonna make sure we get rid of any excess glue. Now, I didn't put too much on here, so that's a good thing, but we wanna make sure we get any excess off because this is very difficult to paint over and prime over. So you wanna make sure you remove it. Here, I'm just using some simple baby wipes. You can use a paper towel, you can use a rag with vinegar, you can use pretty much anything. Just make sure you get it all off. That should do it. Now we're gonna let this sit for a good hour and she should be good as new. So here's our second piece in the set. And as I mentioned earlier, somebody who shall not be named and possibly still under investigation knocked this piece to the ground while we were working on it and may have completely dislodged the top. 
Now this piece, I can tell once I'm taking it apart, is completely um, glued together. There's no screws, there's no nails, nothing, it's all glue. So what we're gonna do is we're going to fix the glue. First, we gotta clean up all this ragged area with sandpaper. We're just gonna clean it up nice, give a nice, not completely flat, but somewhat flat surface for us to re-put the glue on. And we're going to do this on all of the surfaces where the wood touches each other because we're going to apply glue with our handy dandy injector since we already had used it and again like i said it's single use so we may as well use it one more time before we have to waste it because that's a cost savings right there though it's not cheap to buy got everything cleaned up all the edges have been sanded all the gross splinters and everything have been removed I'm just gonna make sure that this piece that fell out fits back in where it should and that everything is as it should be and it is so we're just making sure all the pieces um, are where they should be and now we're gonna actually apply the glue so again I'm going to use weight on this as opposed to a clamp. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna inject the glue in here. I'm gonna take it nice, not too much again, but enough that we're gonna get a good adherence. And since I've sanded this, we've got a nice porous surface for the glue to adhere to. These little injectors are very, very handy for this type of application. I'm gonna make sure there is no glue remnants. I used my mouth to hit it in, make sure there was a nice, firm um, seam and it was nice and tight. And now I'm just making sure I get rid of any glue excess. Since I put glue on pretty much every single seam, I'm wiping pretty much everything, just to make sure. 
So I'm using the weight to make sure that these joints stay nice and firm. But since we also did the side pieces, I decided we're gonna use some clamps and this will make sure that these side joints that we did stay nice and tight. So I'm gonna do one right here and then I'm gonna do one on the other side as well since we did both joints. Just tighten up, up nice. You wanna be careful, this wood is very fragile. So I'm tightening, it, I'm tightening it nice and tight, but not so tight that I crack the wood. You wanna do it very gently. Just a tiny bit. You wanna put the clamp right on, right where you actually did the seams. That's important, because that's where the pressure needs to be applied. All right. All right, so now that we've fixed all the dings and smoothed them out and sanded them pretty well, we're gonna go ahead and scuff sand the rest of the piece. Again, I'm gonna use my 220, which is a finer grit, because on this surface, we don't wanna damage it. Um, as it's very fragile. So we're gonna wrap this around my handy dandy um, sanding block and I'm gonna go ahead and lightly sand the entire piece. What we're trying to accomplish is basically just roughing up the surface a little bit. And the reason we wanna rough the surface up is because that will leave a porous area for the primer and the paint to adhere better and that will lead to better durability. All right, so our very last step here before we are ready to start priming is a final clean where we're gonna remove all the dust that we didn't get off um, using our brush and our dust buster. So I am using a mixture of vinegar and water and um, I, it's about a half a half mixture. It's eco-friendly, safe for kids and great for furniture. It's not gonna hurt it. So this is what I'm gonna use to wipe down and make sure we get rid of all of the dust that's left over because any dust that's left can really affect our final finish. So you can see how much dust we have here. I hope you have all enjoyed the first part of this process so far. At the end of this video, there will be a thumbnail link to the next video in the series. And a list of all the supplies and steps we covered here this morning will all be listed in the description. And believe me, if I can do this, so can you.